Come on now, my nigga. Niggas knew, niggas knew we was gonna get the reason sooner or later. It's me. It's the boy. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. If I was gonna do a recess video, who was? <laughs> I started doing these videos when I was uh, 14, I think. So that's like nine years, which is roughly 40% uh, of my life. And honestly, you know, with all of the love and success that has brought me, I couldn't be happier. If there's one thing I'm not, it's a liar. And I'd be lying if I didn't say, Life well spent. I'm not always right, but I'm always real, baby. Try to hide from the camera. Hide from the camera. I ain't going outside today. For as long as he's known that I've done these, my older brother Quan has always been a major supporter of these videos. I don't know why, I'm positive that this nigga don't even know what a Phineas is. <laughs> Shit, apparently neither do you. Recess is something he grew up on. A lot of us did. I think it's time I gave him a video he can enjoy in the form of TJ, Spinelli, Vince, and the other ones. Recess was goaded, man. It was fun. It was funny. It gave us relentlessly smart stories with unforgettable characters as if I just didn't do a joke where I acted like I couldn't remember the names of the rest of the cast. Like who could forget this classic scene of TJ and Vince arguing with each other? Tender. We on recess, baby. Patreon asks for it, my nigga, so that's what we taking it. I know y'all want that Daria, man, but I just I don't know what to tell y'all, man. They the ones passing that bag up. Money, money. Money. Right, D'Angelo from Hats Off Media. G Tunrific Tariq. I'm going <laughs> G Tunrific Tariq. I'm on your dick. Crazy. My recess video is going to fucking suck. Whoa. Why are you telling the truth? This ain't televised, they telling lies, but promise I won't. We've been patronized, they taking lives, I'm on my way home. Relax my mind about half the time, I'm watching cartoons for knocks, how I'm wiping my home. Of course they resemble my skin, wanna watch too. Hypnotizing, Titanic, how I frolic through the vibes. Okay. Dreaming mama's proud as if she looks through his penny size. I'm a man of the house like Oscar. Slide. We deceive, I believe he the Oscar. James Earl, when I speak, I'm a fossa. Got a swerve in the streets, never block us. I go, feel more, just try to make you feel more. Through the halls, I felt scorns. Looking at me cause I don't like what you like, you feel torn Should've smacked your lights, slick back, you ain't seen pimpin' before For the stars I shoot pimpin', no boy, you best check the score You know how we do The world can be a cruel place, people treating each other terribly for no reason But it doesn't have to be that way Not if we look out for each other I mean, being a kid is hard enough without kids being hard on each other, right? Come on you're the best friends a guy could ever have. You know, life with you guys is never boring. Yeah, some people say a best friend is the most important friend a kid can have. But I say, why pick one? I'm the luckiest kid in the world. I don't have a best friend. I have five. Politics is usually... It's taken me like five days to get to this point in the script. This one is already crazy difficult to write. This is uh, this is gonna be fun. Wait, it's uh, it's it's missing something. There we go. And if we're not careful, by the time we're in junior high, our first dates will be with guys named Paul or Joe. Oh! Recess was created by Paul Germain and Joe. In 1997, Disney approached the two of them to create a new and and so um and so be here. In 1997, Disney approached the two of them to create a new animated show. Paul was fresh off like two episodes of The Simpsons and helped co-create Rugrats, and Joey Joey Applesauce actually helped develop Hey Arnold. I'm sorry, I don't I don't mean to keep disrespecting your name, my boy. We clown everybody on this channel. See, watch this. Hey, bro. You a bitch. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Recess is about six friends from Third Street School. TJ, Spinelli, Vince, Mikey, Gretchen, and Gus. And their misadventures on the playground. In an era where a lot of cartoons were kind of just about 
kids, Recess definitely found his way to stand out. Recess is this weird enigma of an animated series that I don't really know if I've seen before or since. The closest thing that uh, I could think of might low-key be Craig of the Creek. What I mean by that is its setting is grounded and follows pretty closely to the rules of reality, like a Hey Arnold or a Ginger. But it exaggerates the perspectives of the kids in really unique ways like a kid's next door. Not everything that happens in recess can happen in real life, but it's not too far-fetched from a child's perspective that they could think that it could. Like, look at this school, son. It's literally designed like a prison. They really go all in on selling you the concept that this recess period is a freedom for these characters. Finster walks around like a prison guard. They got this bitch-ass informant. Even the font is given mad 25 to life vibes. And I think this exaggerated nature in the setting and characterization is what led to a lot of creative things they ended up doing with the storytelling. There's a king, these niggas start cults, there's currency, politics, a, uh, a ghetto segmented off for the younger kids that the older ones see as less than human. Uh... How do you say this nigga's name? I think the best thing about Recess though is that it's really smart. It takes these kids and puts them in situations that are metaphors for what adults experience in the real world, but they constantly find creative ways to adapt it. I always kind of knew this about the show and this episode's about it throughout. Like, I guess the box, uh, that episode, I think that's a metaphor for the prison system and the one where Spinelli watches the girl swing into the sun and starts a cult, that's real reminiscent of, uh, hmm. Well, uh, that, that shit that got Chef killed on South Park, I'll say that. I miss Isaac Hayes, my nigga. You ever saw Soul Man? They show Bernie Mac's dick in that legend shit. I can't tell if this Santa episode is an allegory for religion, or if the concept of recess being super smart has caused me to look for stuff that isn't really there. All right, time to dust off my crack theory about Sherry and Terry being light-skinned black women because they daddy black. Fuck! I'm watching this episode where Gus gets bullied and... Man, this show really is a metaphor for society. Because they go through all these hoops to try to help Gus, but notice how telling a teacher just doesn't come across their minds? It's like watching a hood movie. A lot of these issues could have just been solved if they just called the cops. Uh, or, or not. Actually, uh, no, just, uh, just, just act like I didn't say anything, sorry. Sorry, everybody. How long is this fucking recess period, son? Like, ours was probably just like 15 or 20 minutes, but them niggas be out that bitch for at least two hours. We didn't have time for character arcs back then, my nigga. Get a couple toss-ups and football going, and it's right back to learning 2x plus 3x equals why do I have to learn this shit if I'm just gonna make money talking about Charlie Brown in my 20s? You can't take me! <laughs> but to help me talk a little more about what exactly made Recess so great conceptually, allow me to cheat and recruit my homeboy, the storyteller, to say a couple words. Oh wait, actually, shit, hold up. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Ow! Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid. Recess is one of the most interesting shows I watched growing up, primarily because it does such a good job at depicting kid culture, specifically on the playground. TJ is the personification of everything Recess embodies. He's the leader type character, but he's also played up as this weird spokesperson for the rights of kids on the playground. It's weird. Recess depicts school as an institution that kids are obligated to fight back against in order to live their lives and have fun. Like that's, uh, that's the majority of the conflicts in the show. Even the minute ones, like uh, a new, a new game of like Jenga or whatever has come. It wasn't Jenga, you know what I mean? And so Recess embodies those values. Miss Finster wants a monopoly on ice cream. TJ and the gang are gonna redistribute it to the kids. They wanna tear down old Rusty. They're gonna go on strike in the playground. It's this kid empowerment fantasy and that's something I really love about it. Recess is just as much about friendship as it is fighting for your right to have fun and be who you want to be. TJ is this weird playground revolutionary that personifies these values. And I know that sounds like very weird wording, but that's that's genuinely how he's paid up. Even in the movie, they're like, what, what are we going to do without TJ? He always makes the plan. Watch out, man. Get a rest. Get a rest. It's why the economics of Recess is such a fascinating episode to me. It's crazy what we can do in 10 minutes. So again, these episodes are all 10 minutes and... It feels like they get through a lot, like I really enjoy them. The entire episode follows the entire school being monetized by students, but instead of money, it's cards. It's money, <laughs> it's money. You have to pay to walk in, drink, play ball, lie down, it's nuts, but it's also really real. Everything TJ's being fined for is stuff that should be and used to be free, but now there's a market on doing anything. 
One of my favorite scenes in the episode is where he sells his hat to this dumb guy. I think it's Menlo or some dumb shit like that. And it's very clearly supposed to be symbolic of him compromising his integrity and selling his identity. You know, one of them. You know, Ma, which one it is. It's, you know what I mean? He, he's selling out. That's the, that's the long and short of it. And you get to see what he does to get out of this. He starts working and realizes, oh shit, this is a scam. And it is. Working class people can't build wealth with working wage jobs. You build wealth by exploiting people. And that's exactly what TJ does. He uses the kindergarten kids to work jobs for him. He underpays them. He builds a monopoly around himself. I won't talk, I won't talk too deeply about the episode because, you know, it's simple. But it's effective in its message that money and power corrupts people. In relation to everything I said prior, this episode always stuck out to me when I was young because TJ's rarely ever depicted as unlikable or flawed. Well, you know, except that one time. <laughs> And that one episode where uh, the black guy didn't like him for no reason. <laughs> I don't blame him. Anyway, the contrast of seeing a character that was so often depicted as a spokesperson for kids on the playground, as this vulture who lost themselves, it was, it was interesting. But also at a young age, it's very easy to understand. See, that's the thing with Recess too. A lot of the episodes outside tackling the role kids play in an academic institution, both on a social and institutional level, tackle a lot of interesting adult ideas that are easy to digest and understand as a kid. Like, okay, let me, let me even line up. One of my favorite episodes is the kiss episode. Not even because Spinale is my favorite character, but it's because of the story that Butch tells. It's so dumb, but in the best way. He makes the kiss sound really dramatic. Like, I don't, I don't think they, <laughs> I don't think they kissed. I think it was crappy cheeks. I don't know. It sounds it right. Why are you watching your brother in the basement? <laughs> I like Spinale's episodes a lot. I've always had a thing for rough characters with sensitive sides, and Spinale feels like she fills that niche really well. Episodes that jump to mind are the ones where she falls in love, her dealing with being in Ashley. Like, if there's one character of the cast that I think can be thrown into any situation or the widest variety of situations i should say it's her ah man like uh the episode where she does graffiti all over the playground i love that one that's one of my favorites you have to keep in mind when recess was airing i wasn't i wasn't progressive in the slightest toxic masculinity misogyny all the buzzwords that was that was me I got kicked out of my school for getting into fights, I moved schools a lot, I was very anti-confrontational, angry, very irritable. And I put up this really aggressive front because, you know, I was frustrated, right? <laughs> when you're frustrated, that's what you do, you're angry. But quietly, I had this passion for writing and artwork and all these weird nerdy things. Spinale was one of the first characters I related to in the show, primarily because I could see a bit of myself in her. The discomfort of feeling infatuated, the love of professional wrestling, being prone to threats and violence, yet still having this really soft and sensitive side to her, it kind of makes you feel less alone. It's a look at the world through the perspective of a child, the institutions, the authority figures, the social hierarchies, and the sense of scale that these seemingly minute things seem to have on their lives. Recess is there to empower you, to remind you to take a break and enjoy the world around you, because it won't last forever. So cherish those around you and keep making memories. <laughs> That's all I got. Like I said, right, uh, my brother has been a massive supporter of these videos. I knew I wanted to do Recess eventually because I always wanted to give him a video on something that he actually watched and cared about. So, I mean, like, of course, what did I do? I called him, my nigga. <laughs> Sounds obvious to me. So, damn, how long has it been since the last time you watched it? Wow. <laughs> so, well over... 20 something years. <laughs> wow, damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what what are like some of your like oldest memories with recess? Being so I spent a lot of time as you know with my grandmother. We all just kind of woke up around the same time, watched. It was called one Saturday morning where they had the fire lineup. We kind of just get our breakfast whatever that might be and just watch all the cartoons all the way through. We just go outside like literally for the rest of the day. You know, that was something I looked forward to. So that was like a big part of my uh, childhood really so out of all the one saturday ones that's the one that kind of did it for you you know why or you know what's crazy i thought about that while i was watching just watching some of the stuff that was going on like different clicks like different 
different storylines. It took me back to, I don't even know if people really know, too many people know this, but I lived in Bloomfield for like maybe two to three years, probably less than that, honestly. A lot of those scenarios were kind of uh, similar. I saw a lot of similarities in the stuff that I was seeing in recess. Kind of thinking back now, I kind of think that's why I was so drawn to it because I had the opportunity to come from Newark and, you know, predominantly black school. Go to Bloomfield, it's predominantly white, and they just got a different lingo, different swag. You know, they were kind of real heavy on, like, baseball and kickball and stuff yeah. like that. And when I, you know, was going to Newark, it was, like, football, basketball, like, yeah, I was introduced to a lot of that stuff that I saw on recess. Uh, during my time and going for it, so, yeah. But your majesty, enough! I've got better things to do than worry about some dumb kid. A lot of, uh, a lot of hove this video. Did you know why the show was called Recess? Because niggas, niggas was, was in parents. Recess. TJ is the main character. I think the storyteller did a great job describing him, so let's just play what he said again. Recess is one of the- <laughs> It's like, nah. Man, it did not take long for me to get attached to TJ, son. Everything about him is exactly what any kid wanted to be. He was confident, a leader, a voice of reason, always just had the solution to every issue. This little nigga had the playground on lock. Right on, TJ. Fight the power. <laughs> TJ could get these motherfuckers to do anything, son. This is one where they literally fix a broken down school bus. How about starting her up? Why the fuck did it take me two seasons to realize that I jacked my whole character design from TJ? Word for word, bar for bar like shit. I was in the street selling crack! I even got the three tufts coming out of my head. Uh, okay, so following this was originally a joke about how I could dress as him for Halloween, right? But this video took so long to do that Halloween came and went and I actually was TJ, so... The joke doesn't even make any sense anymore. So let's just play the clip that I was gonna use for the punchline. Fun fact, actually really, really sad fact. If you're wondering what the rest of the setup was, I, too bad. Blame me for taking so long to write this bullshit. Who did you, who did you remember the most about and who did you remember the least about? I remember the most about TJ. I think that's just yeah. because obviously that's the main character. And that was the one that I took to the most. I felt like I had a lot of similarities just to his, uh, his personality. Like, low key, I had the same swag for real. But, um. <laughs> Going somewhere with that ball, Pally? Uh, uh. I think not. Yeah! Woo Way to go, Spinelli. Nice sack. Jeez. Fam, it's. Uh... Is Spinelli just the main character? I think we know more about her than anyone else. Like, we see her parents more than any other characters, including TJ's. They're really interested in figuring out what makes her tick. She really does just get the Helga treatment. She's the only kid who's not voiced by a kid. She's voiced by Pamela Alden, who did Bobby Hill. Damn! What are you talking about? What, what are, are you talking, talking about? about? What, what are you talking, talking about? about? In F, F in English? English? Bobby, you speak English. English. They actually changed TJ a few times throughout. I actually kind of didn't even really notice. But the rest of the kids remain casted the same way throughout the whole show. And honestly, while editing this, like, I had to go back and, like, watch clips from, like, earlier in the show. And it's really noticeable. I didn't even realize it. Grew up right before our very eyes like shit. Yeah. What happens? We're all in this together. And Prickly wasn't nearly as bad as everyone said he'd be. He even called me partner. It is I who must make sure the first graders don't get too uppity. It is I who must make sure us sixth graders are treated with respect. These six chums, once again, through quick and decisive action, put the needy of my playground first. Spinelli, she's uh, the brawn of the group. She be body slamming niggas, joking niggas the fuck up. And I think because of her tough exterior, the writers worked really hard to make sure she got a lot of introspective and sympathetic moments. To show that her one emotion isn't just pissed. <laughs> Well, let's go dig her out. The end result, we got an artistically inclined wrestling fan who's a strong-willed loose cannon. That's a lot of adjectives, my nigga. That, uh, that means they did a good job. I'll pass, Gus. I'm not partial to dried meats. Pause. What the fuck? Why, the nitrates alone. Nonsense. Just wash it down with what Vince is mixing up. Bottoms up, Gretch. 
That's lean, baby. Come on, I ain't stupid now. Me? No, no! My boy Vince! I'll be honest, I didn't remember anything about Vince from when I was a kid except for the fact that he was black and he played sports. I didn't even remember this nigga name, son. I distinctly remember having to Google the black kid from Recess in that How to Black era. Those were some dark times back then, man, but uh, but don't worry. These times are darker. Oh, hey, look, check it out. I just uh, just found the blackest thing Vince says in the entire run. Look, I love to hang, but I gotta get home before the streetlights go on. Know what I mean? They make Vince really well-rounded as well, but it's all really just, like, sports-based. Vince is bold, he's sharp, extremely charismatic and likable, the whole nine. They make him really confident and competitive, so you'd imagine that that's where a lot of his lessons and story come from. I love this nigga now, I think he's great. I really love this one episode around the end of the run where Vince gets to play golf with the principal, but everybody starts to treat him weird and act like he gets some kind of special treatment just because they boys. They give these characters some really great speeches, that's definitely their thing, but Vince's here is probably my favorite one in the entire show just because of how solid the moral is. I'm not looking for favors or power or anything like that. All I want to do is play some golf. If that hurts my reputation, then that's the way it goes. I'd rather be known as the guy who did what he thought was right than the guy who quit because he was afraid of what other people might say. Hey, that's a good clip, but try to forget about it and act surprised when you hear it in the AMV later. Look, I'm Peter Pan! Stop fooling around, Grundler. You're an astronaut, not a cartoon character. If TJ's the brains of the group in one way, Gretchen is the brains of the group in the other. All that science stuff, that STEM stuff, that shit that make your soul burn slow like ether. They gave Gretchen way more to do than I remember as a kid, son. She has so many great solo episodes. Here's, uh, here's some of them. What? There's two more kids after this. I ain't finna harp. Fuck y'all thought this was another brace face or something. Gretchen has a few pushover tendencies that they play with a little throughout the run. They definitely try to show what her limits are. But in everything she does, she's really sincere and earnest. She really is a sweet character under that human calculator shit. Is that an actual saying? Like, I've been calling characters human calculators in my videos for like two years and I don't even remember where I got it from. You probably stole it from somewhere like you do with everything else. Hey, what the f Yeah. Lots of people have gone through life without names and they've done fine. Oh yeah? Like who? Well, like the artist formerly known as Prince, the well, unknown soldier, the, the other four guys in the Jackson 5. <laughs> Why did I decide on a new song for every kid again? My Apple Music ain't but so extensive. Y'all finna just hear Inhale by Bryson Tiller for the fifth time in a minute. I got love for Mikey, real talk. Mikey really is just kind of like uh, Theodore from the Chipmunks. He's soft-spoken, a sweetheart, kind of an airhead, eats a lot, can't forget that. <laughs> Look at this song from the 60s cartoon. They like describe every chipmunk. Alvin gets the thought he's my boy. He be, he be going viral. Simon gets fucking symphonies. Uh, Sure, yeah, I, I guess. And yeah, they're just like, Theodore is hungry, because that's a personality trait. I think though Mikey's most interesting character trait is the fact that he's really poetic. I really like that angle that they go with him. He's the one with the clearest set of morals. Every action of his is in the mind of peace for everyone. I mean, I, I don't know, that sounds like good shit to me because I'm an, an agent, agent of, of chaos. chaos. Ow. Oh, and his singing voice, duh. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Mikey's singing voice is done by the late Robert Gallet. It's so great. There's a couple episodes that focus on him using his voice, overcoming stage fright, coming into his own. There's one where he sings with a t-shirt that he actually ends up falling for. It's relentlessly sweet. I know you're not going to believe this, Mikey, but someday you're going to meet someone your own age and she's going to be the luckiest girl in the world. Well, I'm still not going to sing. You don't have to, Mikey, but I wish you would. Not for Principal Prickly, not for me, but for yourself. And I guess now is as good a time as any. You can't really have any full discussion of Recess without paying tribute to the amazing performance of the late, great Jason Davis as Mikey, who passed away last year. Jason gave a sincerity to every word that came out of Mikey's mouth, one that I don't think any other kid could have given. I don't know much, if anything, about Jason Davis as a person, but what I know is what he gave us as Mikey. The kind of love that bleeds through that voice isn't taught or manufactured. All of the kids have their own functions in the crew, 
but it is made very, very clear that Mikey was the heart of Recess. And so was Jason. And I guess I'll round it off here with Gus. Gus is uh, the new kid. I am not a new kid. In the second half of the first episode, his pops drops him off in the middle of TJ and M's class. He's never completed a full year of school in just one spot. His family's always moving around. Golly, man, they be tossing this little boy around like a... You know, when you do that, you only make the implications of the joke even nastier. Like, the end of the simile could have just been like a basketball. Who, Who am I talking, talking to? to? Adding him was smart from a storytelling standpoint because he doesn't know anything about the codes of the playground, any myths or legends. So when these things come up, we're right in the position that he is. And when one of the kids has to explain it to him, we get to receive the exact same information. Other than that, they kind of overcompensated and gave him a lot of the really cool shit to do. Like they just randomly find out one day that this nigga caught so many bodies in dodgeball at his old school that niggas started calling him El Diablo. You know, Gus, we heard another nickname for you, El Diablo. Right, you know, the white kids in my school uh, called me something similar. I think it was uh, El Negro. I was told to speak about Gus unsolicited for like a few minutes, so I'm gonna do that. My problem with Gus is that he's fake. He's, he's, he's like the prime example of like a fake friend, right? In this show, like there are so many instances in which like TJ and his friends, they're all like, they're all really supportive of him. Like they try to help him out when he's getting bullied, when he's under pressure, what have you. Like he's, I get what Gus is supposed to represent. He's like the new kid. He's the new kid on the block, whatever. And he's supposed to be like insecurity. And he does these really uncomfortable things because you know, when you're young, when you're a kid, you do really awkward and weird, uncomfortable things. That uncomfortability in seeing that, I get how you could project that into Gus. The problem is he's kind of a dick. Like every time, consistently, uh, the Hustler Kid episode, Hustler Kid takes him in. Uh, he teaches him the ropes. What does he do? He says, you're a chump. Teats him. Then his friends come through. He's like, yo, you need to stop this. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he gives him crocodile tears. He teats him. He's making his bread. Cool. After that, let's, let's, let's talk other episodes. Great. Um, he takes off his glasses one time, right? And they said, wow, you look cool. So he takes off his glasses. He's like, wow, what, what a rebel. rebel. Like, <laughs> give it a rest. He does this all the time. Oh, the, uh, look, everyone loves the dodgeball episode, right? Like El Diablo or whatever. He sees his friends getting beaten down, basically taking gunshots, right? He's like, well, that's how the cookie crumbles. This dickhead, like Ooh, what? Yeah. He does this all the time, all the time. Like it is so consistent. He consistently says the worst thing in every situation. But I'll give him this, I'll give him this. There's one, one episode that I think addresses his fatal flaw and I think it does it in such a nice, sweet, sincere way. It's the picture. Well, okay, you know, even just, okay, one more sentiment about Gus real quick. The reason, like, okay, because I'm like a fan of Teen Titans Go, and I feel like I should like, establish that right now. I'm not opposed to characters being jerks or letting things get over their head, right? I'm not, I'm not against that. I like that show. But the difference between, like, a show like Go, right, where, like, all the characters are kind of jerks and they're all kind of mean to each other, is that, like, TJ and his crew, they're not mean to Gus. At least not overtly, at least not in like a intentionally mean way, right? Like they all seem to have his back. So every time that Gus lets something get to his head and suddenly he's he's moving he's moving like a op for no reason. It's like, oh I can't I can't move around you. Ooh, I'm a big boy now. Like it's annoying. Because like everybody else is so nice and then you Every time something gets to your head, you, you this is evil. Like, and it's different. It's different from like, and I'm gonna get into this. This is a whole random other sentiment, right? But like, it's different with like TJ, where he has the episode where he like becomes the card master or whatever, right? Because he's cl we clearly get to see his journey to being antagonized and losing all of his rights on the playground. And then that kind of motivates him to suddenly go down this evil path, right? Gus, he literally like, every time he takes advantage of something, there's no reason for him to do it. He just does it. He just let, he consistently lets things get to his head. And that's what frustrates me about him. The time the girls were gonna be up TJ and he started hiding in the toilets. Well, Gus is like, nice hmm, what, what, what does this have to do with me? Show. Vince is categorically depressed about not being good at sports anymore. And he laughs at for being last instead of him. Snake, he gets in over his head way too easy. Gus, like some people watching this video probably don't know what I'm talking about, right? Gus, you know Gus, you know a Gus, you know a Gus in your life. Gus is the guy that when you're going through a bad breakup, he says, yo, 
Yo, that, yo, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, I heard you got a, a new man too. That's crazy. You want to see a picture real quick? Gus, you know Gus. Gus, Gus is the guy that switches up when he sees girls at the motive. Where, where, where's, where was this energy at the prees? Oh, I, I don't want to go out. I'm tired. Like, what, what do you mean? Gus, you know Gus. Gus comes crying back after his breakup to tell the group chat, yo, yeah, we. We should hang out again, you know, just trying to rekindle relationships, you know, keep my real friends, you know. I know, I don't know why we've been so distant. Yeah, right. You want to know why I don't like Gus? It's because I've met Gus. I've, I've endured Gus. And so have you. And shout out to TJ, because I would, I would not have the patience for this two-faced piece of shit. <laughs> Now you'd think, you'd think being in the military, right, whatever that means, right, that like a big part of his character would be loyalty and standing by people's side. No, safety man, safety man, give it a rest, he ain't doing nothing, he ain't helping nobody. Literally, in that fifth grade episode, all that safety man talk, all that, oh man, just leave them be. Dodgeball, El Diablo, right, he was like, he, he said, forget, we can fuck them kids, who cares, who cares, that's Gus. That's Gus's energy. That's what he's on. That's your king. And like his role in the group is always like this secondary role. Like I don't even think like the problem with Gus is that like his episodes aren't even bad. You know, I think Gus has some interesting episodes, but the actual character of Gus, he's a character that I know I dislike in real life. Like literally even Lawson, I think Lawson is funny. Like he, he is, he's like a piece of shit. Yeah. But like, he's funny in how he does it. Right. Gus is annoying in the, like everybody in the cast is so nice to him, but so nice to him. And he's just an asshole for what? For what reason? For what purpose, man? You're the new kid. They literally helped you. They helped you the whole time. And a big part of Gus is like standing up for himself and nimi hoim hoim, nimi hoim hoim. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. Congratulations. Right? I don't know. It's, it feels like an arc about confidence, right? Obviously, like Gus is a character that doesn't have a whole lot of confidence and he's thrown into situations where he can get really overconfident. I get that. I understand that that's his character flaw. I think that's the angle that they were trying to go for with his character. If I'm to get like it's slightly more serious right now. I just think you ended up creating a character specifically for me that makes me go, oh, I don't like you. <laughs> like, I know Recess didn't go into like high school or whatever. Guaranteed, these guys ain't friends, right? TJ ain't going to Gus's birthday party. What is this? Alas, Gus is like so annoying. <laughs> um, but outside that, I think the main cast is pretty cool. Um... Okay, good to know. <laughs>
guys, let's promise never to talk about this. While I don't mind the group approach at all, like I actually do think that it's pretty fun, I do feel like the show could have benefited from a few more one-on-one -on -one episodes to strengthen a lot of these relationships, because right now, I only know Mikey and Gretchen are friends because they told me that they are, but they didn't exactly show me why. But if you think hard enough, right, like, it makes sense why the show is set up the way that it is. When you're on the playground, one of your friend's problems just kind of turns into everyone's problems. So that kind of explains why they always go through everything together. But speaking of the playground, man, this cast is fucking huge. Can't name everyone, we'd, we'd be here all day. Which, I know y'all don't mind, but my roommates don't want to hear me record for that long. We don't care! Well, I made this video longer, but I gotta feed my cat. I'm the one holding the microphone. I mean... Meow? This is a bad this joke. This is a bad joke. Let's start a little closer to the main cast. There's a uh, Randall. He's like the informant. He dick rides Miss Finster crazy and snitches on every kid in the playground whenever he gets the chance to. They actually call him a snitch too. I didn't even know these niggas was allowed to do that. Look at me. I got nothing. Maybe that's because you're always snitching on everyone. What's a snitch? Always oh, a snitch. 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 This is all from one episode. They give Randall death too. The one where he does stand up is pretty good, but I really love this earlier one where he just like stops snitching and becomes everyone's friend because it pretty much verifies that Randall doesn't snitch just for personal gain. He genuinely considers Miss Finster a friend and likes being around her and they do this with him early it's like episode 10 but i feel like this is the kind of story any other show would have did around seasons four or five you're miserable aren't you more than you'll ever know i miss finster tj the way she used to yell my name the way she used to order me around even the way she used to give me half her pickle and sardine sandwich we had a special friendship tj but now i'm just a regular kid if he wasn't such a fucking wet blanket, Randall could be pretty fun. Too bad this nigga graduated from 3rd Street Elementary and made fucking gummo, oh snitch ass nigga. Niggas envy, oh, blicky gup, stiffy, oh, gup, blicky, oh. So then I said to the superintendent, that's no kindergartner, that's my wife. <laughs> huh? Finster and Principal Prickly, we could kind of do these two together. Finster's the main teacher we see. She watches the kids at lunch, hovers over them, as like this big authority figure. She's a great foil for TJ. Actually, Prickly is too. I think because of the movie, I remember him having a bigger presence in the show than he actually does. Miss Finster does a lot more of the heavy lifting in that regard. They usually bring in Prickly to up the stakes a little bit. So Prickly says, that's no kindergartner, that's my wife! Ah! Stop that! Oh, KRS-One ass niggas. It's Thirteen? <laughs> this beat hard, though. Holy speedy! So this is it, huh? Nice flagpole. Of course, mine's bigger. Ayo. Pause. What the fuck? This is episode where Prickly's brother goes to visit the school. Apparently, he's an elementary school principal, too. And fam, this episode is the craziest dick measuring contest in the whole show. I think a flagpole that large is unseemly. That's right, size don't matter. He ain't doing nothing with that, my boy. Hey! Oh, 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 God. Oh, Dave, sorry. Oh, oh, God. So then this nigga challenges the kids to a game of kickball versus his best kids the next day. Fam, they pull up and everybody's just bizarro versions of each other. Racially diverse bizarro versions. <laughs> If this was 2021, bro would've just won off that alone. Prickly's brother is woke, I fear. It's the Black Gus for me. It's giving ally. It's giving NAACP. It's giving image award. Join me and Harriana Hook in our latest collab. The diversity in recess is terrible. Oh! There's the Ashleys, who were just all of the popular girls. They all, they talk like that mean girl shit, but like, they're all just named Ashley. March 23rd? That makes you an Aries. I'm a Leo. We're like totally compatible. We are? But I'm a Gemini, and Geminis get along with Aries even better. They do? Not as good as Leos. I bet you differ. Quick, Gretchen, run before they make you wake your mother up at 5 a.m. and ask her what time you were born. Gretchen? Hustler kid, he's definitely got a wild future ahead of him. Swinger girl, upside down girl, uh, those are two different ones by the way. Uh, I like Lawson, 
who's TJ and Vince's rival. He's such a cartoonized version of a hating ass nigga. He be coming like buddy in the back of my videos sometimes, son. Can I have a name yet? No! King Bob, that's definitely my nigga. You know, King Bob is like such an important part of this show. It's kind of weird that I'm only saying that one sentence about him. I feel like he deserves a little more. The Diggers, they split up once and this nigga started coming like Rico Suave. Cornship Girl is pretty much a mainstay for the back half of the series. Uh, there's, uh, Hank, the janitor. Kids today don't seem to know the joys of a good gherkin. Mm, thanks, Hank. And there's their teacher, uh, Miss Grokey, who I can't talk about because I'm pretty sure that oh, my girlfriend yeah, watches these. Damn, what a big ol' ass. What's the mathematics? What's the mathematics? Who did you remember the least? I was gonna say between like Gretchen and Vince. I just kind of knew him as the job. He was cool, but I, I felt like I didn't really know much about him. Probably because I, probably because he was black, and I just like, oh, I, I know black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to see what they on. Like I knew he probably the type of time he probably on. But yeah, uh, he was best with Gretchen. I definitely love the look of Recess. The character designs and the posing are all really fun and expressive, but I gotta give a crazy shout out to the background design. They do a really great job selling that prison break aesthetic that the show went for. I can't think of a single other cartoon that looks like this. You ever uh, you ever watch one of those featurettes where an artist shows you how to draw the characters, but they do like the streamlined storyboard versions? This is eyebrows and then three freckles under each eye. And there's TJ. My nephew, if you don't delete this goofy shit. Vince hasn't always looked so cool. He went through a lot of different haircuts. Aw, oh, man, wait. Why they ain't keep the dress, son? That shit look hard. Man, Gretchen has the weirdest fucking character design quirk, and it bothers me every episode. One ponytail goes in front, and the other one goes behind, and I cannot stand that shit. It's so uneven. Is this just like my OCD, or am I just being a bitch-ass nigga? But watch how you answer that. I guess depending on the episode, certain teams will mean an episode will look a little different. But fam, who the fuck animated this one? This shit coming like the Aladdin cartoon. Look how they moving. Ah. Whoa. Okay, that transition to digital was as smooth as a dirt road in South Carolina. King of the Hill did this shit too, man. It didn't just become digital one day. They like made cell episodes and digital episodes at the same time and just threw them out whenever they felt like it. These bright ass colors put me in a baby boy choco, son. I can't stand this shit, yo. This shit look like a fucking computer game. I think the colors that came from the show being animated traditionally really helped that prison gritty aesthetic that I kept talking about that helped the show really stand out. But with colors like this, what's stopping this show from looking identical to something like mm -hmm, Pelswick? Uh, okay, well, uh, yeah, well, a, a lot, but you you get what you get the idea, nigga. Shit, and it's weird though because Recess never stays digital. I think there's only like five episodes that look like this if you're not counting the specials. Kinda. Yo, whatever, man. This show is weird. Y'all fucking love how these kids talk, so they all sound cool as fuck. Who's ready for some b-ball? I am. B-ball. <laughs> That's what we called it. B-ball. Pull the rotten lock. Depends who's talking. You got one week to get me my stuff, son. Oh, so that's what I sound like. Then, of course, there's all of TJ's slang. Like, womps for whenever yeah, something sucks. Womp. This nigga actually got in trouble for this once, and they, like, took it to trial? It's hilarious, though, and it, it has a great theme. The fact is, I invented that word to stay out of trouble. And now, just because someone thinks my word sounds bad, I have to stand here today defending myself. I don't mean to be rude, sir, but if you ask me, this whole thing womps. Yeah, so, uh, uh, womps... He says tender whenever something is dope. Tender. And uh, oh, my uh, my favorite TJ quote uh, has to be, please get off tune with Victorique's dick and stop asking him to review Static Shock. Go eat a dick, please. Gotcha, bitch. Recess has an unheard of amount of memorable episodes. Son. The whole time watching, I was getting mad Dory Fauna Nemo style flashbacks to episodes that I had seen like 15 years ago. There's no way I can talk about every single last great one. I tried to throw as many shout outs as I could earlier too in the video. That's just kind of how these things go when you're covering a show this massive. If you're trying to watch this motherfucker in order though, uh, just don't take it to Disney Plus. First two seasons are fine, but they just smushed the last three seasons into one and jumbled the order around. It's nasty. And it's not even like the way that you think. 
Recess was one of those shows where they would just tell like two stories in one episode, both running for about 11 minutes. On Disney Plus, they somehow managed to pair the wrong two episodes together. Are you gonna throw up my nigga? Because I definitely am. These niggas nastier than Morgan Freeman for that. <laughs> yeah, right, go look it up, my boy. And here he is, the speedster of the solar system, Vince Earth Guy LaSalle. Oh look, it's the Lloyd in Space pilot. Oh, y'all think I'm joking? Man, Recess might have the most smart and dense first episode out of every show I've talked about so far. It's about TJ getting lunch detention, so he can't have Recess, and his friends have to try to bail him out. But the way they do it is, they go around trying to enlist the help from all the kids in the playground, and it's a crazy easy way to introduce so many principal characters. In just this 10 minutes, we meet King Bob, the Diggers, the Kindergartners, the Upside Down Girl, mad important characters. It's not everyone, I think Randall only speaks like once, but man, do they do a really good job establishing this world. I didn't realize how often these platonic friendship cartoons did the are the two main characters gonna date storyline within the first five episodes. It's the third recess one, the second braceface one, the fucking pilot to the weekenders i guess it's their way of establishing the nature of the relationships but golly all these niggas must have went to the same screenwriting class or something whoever wrote for ginger though definitely failed that class they actually did an episode like that and these niggas fucked around and had a whole seed oh and kim possible too them niggas ain't beat the allegations whatsoever kids of the playground i give you is that one episode where all the balls in the school go missing which is just 11 minutes of them being so fucking filthy my nigga jeez fact is i recently ordered you kids a whole new set of balls they just never showed up a new set great now that's two sets of missing balls hmm is it possible that the two sets are somehow interconnected <laughs> even if you pause that i gotta laugh man. how convenient <laughs> that's is that disgusting, wow. my nigga. oh man but my favorite episode though has to be the season three opener, the picture day one. Picture day is like one of my favorite episodes of the show, primarily because it it's is like peak recess in that it's taking a situation, a regular day school situation, and it blows it out of proportion. They're trying to stay clean. It's like a war. It's like a battleground. You got Randall doing the stupid flute thing. I don't know what instrument that is. Everybody's doing their thing. It starts off establishing that Gus has never stayed out of school long enough to do a picture day. The fourth graders get their pictures taken last this time around. So it turns into a mission to keep Gus clean. This shit turns into a full fucking war movie, son. It's so good. It's like the thin red line. You ever see the thin red line? Don't. <laughs> It'll give you nightmares, my nigga. I saw that shit in college and I've been shitting the bed ever since Finding Dory. You were in college when Finding Dory came out. And? Uh. Uh, okay. And then TJ and Gus have, are the only ones that left and they're in like the little ditch. And they have a little moment where TJ is like, yo, like, I understand this is what you want. And so I'm going to help you get it. Right. Everything gonna be iry. And Gus reflects on that. And then there's this moment where Gus could be out safe in the clear. And TJ stops and tells him to go forward. Like in the show, as far as I'm aware, it's the one moment that Gus does something selfless for the crew. And it really does stick out for me. Unless I'm bugging out. Yeah, no, that moment sticks out to me a lot. In that it was the one moment where he shows loyalty. It's, it's really weird because <laughs> Gus has this militant army man family thing going on. Like, uh, that's not winning him any points with me. Surely that would make him someone that's really loyal. Like, they tried to play up his whole thing as being a leader and leadership and trying to be like TJ, right? But, like, I think above all else, Gus's biggest character flaw is his loyalty. Like, yeah, he's scared, but he doesn't stick around. Like, and not even just in the I'm scared, gonna run away thing. Like, not Usopp. I'm talking, like, he gets... Like a little bit of clout, a little bit of fame, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I don't, I don't know who these niggas are." <laughs> like, right? That's his energy, and that's what's annoying about him. So to have an episode where Gus kind of puts himself second and takes the fall for his friend TJ after all he sacrificed for him, to me was really cool. It's really good, man. It's almost frustratingly good. They body this. Classified satellite photos, sir. Fresh off the bird this morning. Photos, huh? Tell me, what do you think of this photo? Yeah, uh, or well. I don't really have sufficient training to analyze photographs. No? Take a closer look. That's my son, right there near the middle in his first class picture ever. If you ask me, soldier, well, I'd say he's never looked better.
You remember the movie? My nigga, rewatching Reset Schools Out did a little something to a nigga's soul, son. In 2001, Disney decided to throw Paul and Joe some extra bread and decided to throw Recess on the big screen. It's about the start of the summer. TJ thinks he's gonna mob with gang all summer, but they all go to different camps, leaving him alone. After a while, he ends up seeing some fucked up sci-fi shit going on at the school, so he recruits all of the homies to go figure out what's good. Uh, turns out, uh, James Woods wants to try to put a stop to summer vacation, so he's literally going to stop the fucking summer season from happening then i i don't know man a bunch of shit happens after that go watch this shit man it's like it's, it's really it's so much fun <laughs> I really love that TJ and Prickly get to work together on this. I think everything that they do with him here makes me feel like I remember him being around more in the show. TJ's had to fight against Prickly for the rights of his peers so often that you'd almost think that this nigga hates kids. But this movie really challenges that idea. Some days I sit there in my office looking out at you kids on the playground and I think they don't know how good they've got it. In a few years, they're all going to be grown-ups like me. And all those good times will just be memories for them too. So go ahead, put a whoopee cushion in my chair, cover my carpet with fake vomit, make fun of my big saggy butt, but don't you ever say I don't care about summer vacation, cause those memories are the last part of childhood I got left. What else is there, man? I love, I love the way that this thing is animated. There's this really big sense of scope, sense of danger. I've seen so many people try to shit on the CGI school and I don't understand the hate. I miss when shit used to look like this. Plus, the theatrical version of the theme goosebumps every single time, my nigga, listen. Damn it! soundtrack is fucking nasty my nigga there's some flashbacks to establish backstory so they really push for that 60s pop son tender it always takes till the end of a show to remind me how attached i am to these characters man waiting until i finish the show before watching this shit was definitely the right idea it's the perfect bow right on top of a really great run of television mm. speaking of This episode at the tail end of the fifth season, it could have been the fucking series finale. There's the real last episode to air at the end of the three episode season six, but every fiber in my being is telling me that these were aired out of order, so we're just gonna ignore that one. Some feel like TJ and the guys are starting to get too much praise for being the peacemakers on the playground. So Lawson, Randall, and a few other secondary characters form a squad and take all of their glory. This one does a really great job deconstructing the motives behind why TJ and his friends do what they do on the playground. Man, did you ever think about what this place would be like without us? Kids might still be plagued by King Morty's depression era rules. Randall would be a prince. The Ashleys would have actually gotten away with raiding kids. And Library Kid might have wrecked the whole playground and herself. We constantly see them do the right thing and stand up for what's right, but like, why? We're led to just understand that they're all just like, really good kids, but this episode questions if they really do it as a way to just feel wanted, needed, a way to get glory. When they can't do that stuff, they feel empty. But is it because the gratification is gone, or is it just because they genuinely enjoy helping people, like for real, for real? But we aren't glory hounds, or even glory seekers, Gretchen. So our actions were recognized, but we never took those actions for glory. We pulled pranks because we're goofy monkey children, and we did good deeds because we like to help. So, nothing wrong with helping. Of course not, guys. And we as a group just can't help helping. I really love this one. I think it does a phenomenal job looking at all of the events of the series through a different lens than before. But I guess the true finale of Recess is uh, their finale movie, taken to fifth grade. So a little background, Recess finished its original run not too long after the film, but Disney ended up producing these kind of package films that had other episodes in them with new wraparounds. Really wish somebody would have told me that before I wasted my time watching these. But the last one, the last one is all original stuff. TJ and the gang finally enter the fifth grade, and the theme throughout the special is more about becoming accustomed to change. The through line is pretty loose, they do tell like three different stories here, but that's the one thing that's consistent thematically. The special is nice, I think 
The standout story is the one about Spinelli thinking she's too old for Halloween. It results in a great moment between her and Finster. Now I really don't know what to think. Oh, I got a feeling you do. Trust yourself, Spinelli. And remember, tough gals like us, we never let other people tell us how to feel. But, yeah man, I don't know. The last episode of the fifth season and the theatrical movie really feel more like finales than what they do here. But honestly, no matter where you decide to call it with recess, all of it is dope. All of it is classic. All of it will make you feel good. I got nostalgic for recess the very moment I finished the final episode. I can't even tell you the last time something like that has happened to me. Shit, I can't even tell you if it's happened to me before. It's truly a show like no other. Right, D'Angelo from Hats Off Media. Wow, Tariq, this video was way better than mine could ever hope to be, and I get no bitches. Everything alright at home. What? I don't... Why are you... Why y'all still here? I forget something? Holy shit, the crossover. Tricky Bawa Ba! Yeah! What the Ow. fuck? There's more? <laughs> Wanna go to bed, <laughs> son What you call me, bitch? So, in the second half of its run, Lilo and Stitch the series thought it'd be a good idea to cross over with three running Disney shows at the time, KP, Proud, and Amdrag. Then they did recess five fucking years after the show was over. Oh, oh mister, you just doubled your tip. <laughs> Yo, listen to this shit, Mikey sound old as hell. Indeed, Arlo Cal brings to mind the great John Milton, whose epic Paradise Lost, I intend to read cover to cover during our sojourn here. I don't know, man. There's there's an experiment that makes people lazy, it zaps people, they stop it. The recess kids barely even do anything. The ones who talk the most are Gretchen and Gus, which is like a friend asking you if you want to listen to Chance the Rapper and they just throw on the fucking big day. I knew aliens existed! I just knew it! Please, Gus, we kind of try to keep a lid on the whole aliens on Earth thing. Then why did you let Kyla Pratt write a fucking yeah, article yeah. in the other one? All the recess kids kind of look like shit. The scaling's a little off. It's all over the place. This shit is super mid, my nigga. This is definitely the worst piece of recess media there is. Ah, hide and seek. Not it. Good job, y'all. It's whatever, man. I think my takeaway from watching so much recess, talking to my brother about it, revisiting it, after years of barely even thinking about it is really interesting. I do these videos, right? And I come back with something different every time than when I came in. The Weekenders was more clever than I remembered. The Emperor's New School is funnier. Ginger was deeper. The Replacements did a whole bunch of shit in the second season and just got deleted from my memory in those 10 years or so. But mm, man, Recess was exactly how I remember it. It was just as funny. It was just as smart. It was just as witty. It was just as sweet. We grow and we change so often, right? Like. With our new lives and changes in perspective, the things from our past are altered. You know, I, not literally, right? Nobody's going in and changing these movies or shows up, but you know, sometimes some things that you love don't hold up the same. The show you were iffy on might actually be exactly what you need in your 20s. Man, so many people around my age have come around on King of the Hill, it's ridiculous. But you know, and you know, I think this is important. Every once in a while, 
you just kind of you find you find that one thing that one thing that brings you just as much joy and smiles as it used to nothing's different nothing's better or worse you notice new things sure but it's still the thing you remember exactly how you remember it and that's recess my nigga and i think that's really interesting maybe even a little more interesting than a show getting better or worse as an adult instead of watching something i loved as a kid as an adult Recess got me to watch something as an adult and feel like a kid. I can't for the life of me figure out how they did it, but after watching six damn seasons and three movies, <laughs> I'm ready to do it again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's low key. That's low key. All I had to ask for. Anything else you want to say about it? Or a lot of people get it uh, misconstrued and like just figure that cartoons are for kids. That's not the case like you enjoy something no matter what it is just go all in like don't you don't gotta go with the crowd like you like what you like you should, you should keep it that way there stands a broken man it's recess everywhere but in his heart whatever, man. tender Just one minute. I just got an idea. You are my friend. Look, Randall, you only get a few really good friends in life. Friends who like you for who you are. Friends who you like for who they are. And being popular is no reason to give a friend like that. I guess when you're with a person all the time, sometimes you forget to let them know how wonderful they really are. Some days I sit there in my office looking out at you kids on the playground and I think they don't know how good they've got it. Recess, I think I read about that one. Recess isn't something you can read about. You gotta live it. I'd rather be known as the guy who did what he thought was right than the guy who quit because he was afraid of what other people might say. Sure, being a kid can be tricky. Growing all the time, things are always changing. But no matter how much things really do change, I figure as long as we stick up for what we believe in and stay true to ourselves, everything will be all right. Remember this, you're one too. And let's face it, Bob, if us dumb kids don't stand up for each other, who will? You was always so supportive of me and all that. So thank you for that, money. I appreciate it. Love, bro. First things first, I pop up, freaks all the honeys, dummies, playboy bunnies, those wanting money, those the ones I like cause they don't get mason but penetration, unless it smells like sanitation, garbage I turn like doorknobs, heart throb never, black and ugly as ever, however, I stay coochie down to the socks, rings and watch filled with rocks, and my that jam not is not shit jamming, 100 gigabyte laptops, <laughs> As I lay down laws like Island Cop it, stop it. If you think they're gonna make a profit, don't see my ones, don't see my guns, get it? Now tell your friends, Papa hit it, then split it in two. As I flow with the junior mafia, I don't know what the hell's stopping ya. I'm clocking ya, Versace shade watching ya.